Welcome back to our continuing coverage of Hurricane Sandy. You are looking live here as we take a check on it. Sandy. This is Nags Head, North Carolina. A tropical storm watch is in effect. Hurricane Sandy is shaping up to be a mega storm. And one for the record book, some 50 million people in the Northeast alone could be in the line of fire. So right now, Hurricane Sandy, it is a Category 1 storm, but its impacts will reach far beyond any potential landfall. Everyone from Florida to Maine, we really need to be on alert as we continue to monitor Sandy and also the impacts that we will be seeing. Please be on guard, uh, not just in the southeast, but we are extremely concerned about the mid-Atlantic and the northeast. And here is Vivian now with more on well, Sandy. Well, unfortunately, Heather, Hurricane Sandy turned deadly as it passed through the Caribbean. Here is the very latest. At least 21 deaths in total in Cuba, Haiti, and Jamaica are being blamed on Sandy. Preparations are underway here in the U.S. In fact, Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick is expecting utilities to submit plans for the storm today. And New York City has opened an emergency situation room and activated its coastal storm plan. We're keeping you ahead of the latest information here in the studio, but our coverage also includes teams out in the field. Both Mike Seidel and storm tracker Jim Cantori will be reporting from Singer Island, Florida. That's near the West Palm Beach area throughout the day. And Stephanie Abrams and, Mal and Al Roker are in Manlapan, uh, Florida. But we begin with hurricane specialist Carl Parker from the Global Forecast Center. Hey, Carl. Hey, Viv. Well, at this point, it's uh, very difficult to see how we don't get an incredible storm in the northeast. And that's going to be as early as uh, late Sunday and going into Monday, perhaps as late as Tuesday for some of the very worst of the effects. But it's going to be an incredibly large storm, and uh, many, many millions of people will be affected by the system. Right now, it's an 80-mile-per-hour hurricane, certainly not a conventional storm in many ways. The center is right there, and there is some drier air that's wrapping in, particularly in the upper levels, so it's got this sort of discombobulated shape. But we think it's going to sort of uh, go through various phases and take on some non-tropical characteristics, but uh, remain a very powerful and growing storm over the next few days here. So here's the forecast track from the Hurricane Center storm moving off to the north and to the east. There's a lot of agreement about that fact, and there is also a lot of model agreement about the storm coming into the northeast coast. Now, exactly where is still difficult to say, and that's going to have an impact, for example, on where we see the worst of the water level rise and the wave action. If the storm center is farther south, then we'd see that more towards the Delmarva. If it's a little farther north, say coming in around the Delaware Bay, then we'd get that uh, oh, towards New Jersey. And if, it, if it's even farther north, then we'd see that wave action and water level rise up towards the Long Island Sound and even into southern New England. But as far as the wind is concerned, it's going to have a tremendous area of, of very strong wind. We call this the wind field. And this is an approximation of the size of the area of strong winds on Monday morning at 6 a.m. And this entire thing is going to be coming in slowly, so it's going to be a long-duration, high-impact event. And really, folks, if you live here across the Northeast Corridor, you should plan on losing your power. We think the power outages could be in the tens of uh, millions in terms of the number of people affected. All right, let's go to Mike Seidel. He's been covering the storm in Singer Island in Florida. And uh, Mike, a very angry sea behind you there. You've got that right, Carl. Looks like a giant uh, washtub. We've got six to eight footers. White caps as far as the eye can see. The tide is now going out. It's going to be low in the next uh, couple of hours. Next tide, tide is 645, but I want to take the run up here and show you how much sand has been lost out here. We're talking about five or six feet of sand as I walk up the hill. It's not a cut like we sometimes see, but uh, trust me, a lot of beautiful beach. These beaches, again, one of the many beaches being replenished up and down the coast uh, by the Corps of Engineers. Meanwhile, here on the beach, we're getting some wind erosion. We've had some rough weather at times. We've had some pretty good squalls blow through. In fact, we just had a shower. That's the first one we've had in about 90 minutes, so we've been dry with some sunshine. But let me take you back to uh, mid-morning and take a look at one of the squalls. They're rolling from the northeast. They blow in pretty quickly, and they, as they come in, they just shellac you with horizontal rain. It stings along with the sand mixed in. And look at how the ch uh, chairs are bobbing up and down. They're all tied down, these uh, uh, beach chairs. They didn't get 
blown down the beach, but you can see now the wind picked them up. So, again, the brush by right now. As the storm goes by, the winds turn northwest. A pretty decent Florida weekend, although tomorrow is going to be very, very windy. Uh, Heather, northwest could gust over 30, 35, and still breezy on Sunday. If you're heading down here for the weekend or vacation, no reason not to come down here. But tomorrow, another bad day to get in the water. I think it's going to be too rough and uh, too dangerous. Back to you, Heather. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mike. And, you know, good advice here about.